Good evening and welcome to the August 24th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. First of all, let me apologize. I was a few minutes late. I apologize for that. I'm straight off the turnpike from an out-of-town trip, so please forgive me for that. First order of business is the minutes of the July 27th meeting. Uh, I have a couple of comments I'd like to start out with. Page one, line 32, uh, to the board, and if you would scratch the words, ultimately should there, and replace them with the wording, the board should ultimately determine if there should be a residential site plan review. Line 41, page one also, uh, at the end of that line, he passed out a printed, please add the word printed, and then PowerPoint should be capitalized. Page two, line 29, after the word modification, if you'll make that word plural, modifications of the construction by the contractors, if you'll add those two phrases in there, of the construction by the contractors. Line 39, uh, that if it were a typical sloped roof, uh, delete the word vertical and replace it with typical sloped roof. Line 43, uh, stated that, delete the word the, T-H-E. That's all I have. Comments? My only other point of information is, should we have in the minutes recorded the vote, the actual numbers, yay and yay? And That's yay. a question that Lori had. She couldn't get that from the tape. Since I wasn't at the meeting, I, I struggled. It I was, couldn't tell who was it speaking was a lot of the time. Four, four, one, four to one um, against the motion. That the motion be denied. That okay. the motion be denied. Thank you. So one in favor, four opposed. Four in favor. Four in favor, favor. that the motion one. be denied. No, because that is supposed to be that, the positive. That the appeal be denied. Yeah. One in favor of the motion, four against the motion. Right. Right. Any other comments on the minutes? If we could have a vote, all those in favor of approving the minutes? I'm going to abstain because it was absent. Three in favor, two abstentions. The uh, minutes are approved. There is no old business. I would like to point out that uh, Mr. LaPlante called uh, late this afternoon that he was ill and would not be attending a uh, meeting this evening. And I believe Mr. Walsh also called and said that he would not be in attendance this evening. Um, old business, I believe there is none. New business, I'd like to point out to the applicants before we get started. I assume you are the applicants. Uh, we have a quorum of the board present. That's four of seven present. To pass a variance, we need a quorum of the sitting board to vote in the affirmative to pass the variance. So in that case, uh, we are required to have, you are required to have four members of the board vote in the affirmative to pass your variance. And in the case of this evening, that's 100% of the members present. There are five, I'm sorry. We, uh, you came in late, I apologize for that. There's four of the five would need to be, uh, uh, we do have five, which is also a quorum. Four of the five would need to be uh, present. Do we have that option to give them that at this Not meeting? only when there's four. Only when there are four, I apologize. I had that statement worked up before you walked in, I apologize. So let us proceed with the first uh, item of new business, to hear the appeal of James and Elizabeth Salmonfeld Specht, 
I hope I pronounce that right, or 325 Mitchell Road, tax map U32, lot 4A, for frontline property variance of 12 feet 6 inches from the required 40 feet to construct an addition at 27 feet 6 inches from the front property line. If one of you will come to the podium and introduce yourself and please present your, your case. Thank you. I'm Liz Samuelsmith, <coughs> and this is Steve Graham, who's our builder. And um, I don't know if you want to ask questions or if you just want me to. What uh, typically what we do is if you would review for the benefit of the audience here in the audience at home, if you would re re uh, review your application, just go over the, the points of, of your intention for the application, if you would. Okay. Um, well, our current house, the entire house is out of compliance with the variance. And um, what we wanted to do was add a garage with um, a bedroom over it, so a one-car garage with a bedroom over it. And we would be out of compliance. We'd still be um, not, the setback wouldn't be far enough. So we went to all of our neighbor's house and we measured the distance from the road to their house because we didn't have the setbacks on all the houses and that people didn't have the setbacks on their houses. And we did 12 of the houses in the neighborhood. We picked equal numbers on each side of the road and both sides of our house. And, um, and what we found was um, seven out of the 12 were as close or closer than our addition would be. And the average size of the houses that we looked at were by their judgment, some of the people had the exact amount and some didn't, were 1,800 square feet. And the total for our square footage after the addition would be like 2,000 plus a garage. Um, also further down the road on either side of us, most of the houses are also either our size and closer than we are also on the road. Um, most of the houses on Mitchell Road also have garages, one or two car garages. A lot of the houses around us also have rooms over the garage, over in Stonegate. Um, we looked at trying to move the addition back so that we weren't beyond the variance, but it would almost be like you had to have a long hallway to do it, to make it, it just, it, it didn't keep, what, what was really important to us was to do an addition that kept with the character of our older house and kept in the character of the neighborhood. So that's sort of how this all started off. Just a couple questions for you, ma'am. Um, the picture is attached to the application. Um, as I understand it, are the different houses that you've highlighted on the tax map in yellow, as I understand it. And then I, on each of those, you have listed um, footage. And I assume the footage that's list there, listed there is from, is the front setback to the garage, or is that the front setback to the front of the house, or is it the same? Um, the footage back from, is from the road. We actually measure from the road to the house. Road, road to the house. So for like the first one, it's, it's like... Um, 74 feet. I, I don't know which is the first one for you. 331 Mitchell. Okay. That's like 233 feet. Am I reading that right? Yeah, that one's um, the furthest step back. Okay. And then 38, ex 38 feet and 74, et cetera. Right. And just one other question. On your house, mm -hmm. where you're putting the garage, is currently there a driveway there? There's a driveway that goes back, you know, gravel. And so we would just <clears> be <throat> extending the garage, right? So you currently park off the road in that driveway right now, and you would just be covering that space with the garage? Well, we'd still have the same amount of driveway space, and the garage would start right where the, the gravel currently ends. Okay. And as I understand it, the, the front of the 
garage actually will be further off the road than the front of your house. Yes. Yeah. I have the, my husband drew that in red, the exact setback, so it's a little bit easier than I think your black and white one. But the, um, the garage is set back equal to where the deck is currently on the house. Mm -hmm. So, and the deck that we're going to be adding is exactly the same square footage as the current deck, too. So. If I may, I'd like to, for the record, correct, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I see it, on your application, uh, on the first page, middle of the first page, your uh, zoning board application D for the variance, setbacks from property line, current, if you put 40, you have 40 feet as your current setback. Uh, presently, that, Mr. Smith, correct me if I'm wrong, that's where the existing dwelling is. Is that, is that not what that refers to? That's, that's correct. It should have been to the distance to the house. The front setback, the way I read, read your survey, is currently 10 feet 8 inches. Is this correct? Right. Does that sound right? Mm hmm Okay. Your new addition, and I think this is relevant to your application, currently you are grandfathered to a position of 10 feet 8 inches from the front property line because of location and year of construction of your property and so on and so forth. Any new construction that you are applying for today is 27 feet 6 inches from the front property line. Right. So you are, you are requesting a variance to uh, construct an addition, an additional 17 and a half, 17 feet from the front property line, from where you already are, closer, further setback. Is this correct? Yeah. The closest part of your property is now 10 feet 8 inches from the front property line. Your new construction will be 27 feet 6 inches from the front property line. Right. I believe that's right. According to your survey. Right. Right. I'd like that application to reflect that point. That the new construction is, is an additional 17 feet further from the front property line than your existing dwelling. Correct. Okay. The closest point of your existing dwelling to that. Right. I, there's sometimes confusion on that because people think that, that, that what current means is that the current quiet front setback and the proposed front setback would be something, and that's why you need a variance. Something you're less. you're so. correct, and that's why I wanted to question you. Does that, I assume that the current front setback was not the ordinance restriction, but the, where the dwelling is. That's right on the ground today. Okay. So on, on your application, I would suggest we change uh, current setback from front property line. Current front is 10 feet 8 inches. Delete 40 feet and change that to 10 feet 8 inches. Okay. Proposed is 27 feet 6 inches as you have, and that is correct. Right. Okay. A minor point there, but worth clarifying. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I, I may also hopefully a point of clarification for myself anyways, but actually the, the setback I think that you're requesting isn't a front setback, but a side setback. Is a front setback? No, it's a front setback off Mitchell Road. Well, yes. The, the, your building presently is 10.8 feet from Mitchell Road. Right. And the new addition isn't going to come any closer. It's going to be 27 feet off of Mitchell Road, but it's going to encringe on the side the the side opposite of Wedgwood. And you're correct. This is a residential C property and in 16, 19.6.3, the side setback is uh, 10 feet. 10, well, it's 20 and you can reduce it to 10. 10 feet for non conforming. Uh, under 19.4.3, it can be reduced to 10 feet. It can be reduced to 10. You're going to 11, but I guess. So we're talking oranges and oranges and apples and apples. I look at this application as requesting a setback of, of exactly 21 feet on the side, not really on the front. No, the, the setback for non-conforming lots in an IC district is 10 feet, so she meets the setback on the side because she's going to be at 11.7. She does not need a variance on the side setback. 
but okay. she does, they do need a, a front setback because any expansion within a 40 foot setback, even though you're not going closer, would be an expansion of non-conforming structure. And, that, and that's why the ordinance is, the ordinance is written, even though you're not going closer, you still got to have a variance. So but, it is the front setback. But it's not making it any more non-conforming, is it? Well, it's not making it more non-conforming, meaning it's not going close to the property line, but it is making it more non-conforming because it's increasing the square footage within a setback. Okay. Just to clarify that, the, uh, uh, for the benefit of the audience, what we were discussing is that this property is in a residential C district. It is considered a non-conforming lot. The side setbacks uh, of a uh, dwelling in residential C is 10 feet. Proposed setback from the southerly property line of this lot is 11 feet 7 inches. So the side issue uh, uh, for residential C is, is within the ordinance uh, boundary. Any, thank you for pointing that out. That was uh, any questions for the applicant? Um, I just have one question with respect to your exhibit. Uh, there's a list. Uh, there's a list of, of properties with, uh, with signatures in some cases attached to them. Are, are those? Did, did, did you have neighbors yeah. sign? Uh -huh. And, and they are, in essence, approving your application. They're in favor of it. Yeah, we just asked the neighbors, you know, how they felt about it and, and if they would mind signing. The only signature we don't have is those people weren't, they haven't been home. So, at least not. <clears throat> but yeah, everybody was, uh, they felt that it would improve the neighborhood. They also said there's been a big turnover in our house because it's such an old house and the stairway is such that if you're elderly or you have young kids, you, you can't, you know, there's no bedroom downstairs to be able to get you away from the stairs. So, I have a couple questions. To the rear of your property, there's a large undeveloped land that is shows up on the tax map as common grounds. Are you, are you aware of, of what that property is? We were told that it was conservation land. Okay. Uh, so it's your impression that that whole large common area and the extension of Wedgwood Road is all conservation land, uh, conservation easement. Okay. Um, The uh, property that's closest to your proposed addition is 331 Mitchell, which I believe is the Goldens, is that correct? The, the name of the 331 Mitchell, the house just to your left. Mm -hmm. um, I see that they, is this their own this list? Uh, they, they have, is this their signature? Did they sign this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they are obviously fully aware of your... Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I have no further comment. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Seeing that there are no other people in the audience, I can safely assume that there are no people here to speak in favor or opposed to the applicant. So we will close the, uh, the meeting to public comments at this time and open it up for discussion by the board. My observation of this is that uh, currently, the 
as was noted earlier, the, the closest edge to the property is now 10 feet, almost 11 feet from the front property line, and the proposed addition is 27 and a half feet from the front property line. So the new addition is not uh, being built at all toward the front property line. Uh, it is being built away from the front property line. Uh, and it's an additional 17 feet from the front property line. Uh, the side setback does seem rather close to me, but it certainly meets the ordinance. Uh, side setback of 11 feet 7 inches, but, but with ordinance stating 10 feet requirement, it falls within that limit. And there's quite a significant wooded area to the uh, south of that property, uh, a, a significant vegetative buffer area is quite obvious. Um, it appears to me that the, uh, the plans are, are, uh, are reasonable. Does anyone have any other comments? Uh, I was down there this afternoon, took a look at the property, and it seems to me that, that this property uh, uh, clearly, uh, uh, the, the need here is clearly because of the unique circumstances to, of, the, of the property, the proximity of the road, um, and, and it, it seems to me that this is precisely the type of thing that, uh, that, the, that the ordinance takes into account when uh, providing for, uh, for a variance. Um, I certainly uh, feel that, that uh, the variance should be approved. I have a question for Mr. Smith. Uh, I the front set back for the for this property uh, uh, is 40 feet, and that. What page are you looking at? I'm on page 71, 19 6 3, page 71. Uh, 40 foot front setback for both an arterial street and a collector, collector and rural connector street, and I assume Mitchell is considered a. Rural. I don't know which one, but a rural connector street? Yes. Would, would you please uh, uh, ex ex explain for the benefit of the audience and the board uh, the rationale for the 40-foot front setback as compared to a typical 25-foot front setback in other areas? Is it due mainly to the significant traffic increase? I truly don't know the reason why they have a 40-foot setback other than the fact that it's geared to 20,000 square foot lots, uh, which means that there, there probably would be room enough for 40 feet for new stuff anyways, a new in creation of lots. But I mean, honestly, that's quite restrictive in that particular neighborhood. Um, it's what? It's, it's quite restrictive in that particular neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't know the rationale behind it other than the fact that, the, you know, the traffic is greater um, than would be on, on a, just a a feet of or a subdivision road, and uh, that may be the reason why they respect larger setbacks. Do you I'm speculating? Do you, or I'll ask uh, the applicant to come to the podium. I have a, uh, another question. Are you aware that that Mitchell Road uh, has ever been widened, uh, much like Spurwink has in the past, or not Spurwink Sawyer has? Uh, I believe at one time was Widener Spurwing. I'm not aware. Are you aware, is, have these property lines ever been mandated to be moved back by town widening of the right of way for Mitchell? Are you aware of that? Well, before we moved here, I called and asked that because after I saw the house and I thought if they're widening the road, it would be. And um, I don't remember the name of who I talked to, but he said that that there's nothing coming up and it would be at least 15 years before it would be considered. And 
you're not aware of it having, having happened in the past? No. Okay. The other question I have is regarding the, the placement of your addition. Did you look in detail as to shifting the, the uh, garage more to the rear? And you said you would have to, it would be away from the principal portion of the house. Is that correct? And you would have we, to. We tried it on the other side of the house, but the setback off Wedgwood is even greater than on the other side. Okay. Um, we've had like four different plans that we've gone through. Um, but to set it back, there wasn't any way of doing it without it looking. We just figured it, it would it would be architecturally so off from the other part of the house that it, it just would be unattractive to. We really wanted to keep in with the character of the older house. So we decided if, if it couldn't be done this way, it wouldn't be worth it. So you did explore that and found it to be unfeasible. We, we've been pulling around with plans for at least yeah, several plans. Uh, if you push it back, it's like you said, it'd be almost like a se separate building with a long hallway, no really any way to connect the roof line. I mean, so if you, if your addition was mm -hmm. to meet the 40 foot setback, it would be beyond the rear wall of the ex That'd existing the dwelling. It, right. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other yeah, I just had a secondary question. questions? No questions. I had just a few comments if we don't want a question. <clears throat> Are you with them? Yeah. Okay. Just a few comments. First, I um, just wanted to comment that the drawings were very helpful that you provided, and they show a magnitude, mass, and aesthetics that really complement the existing house and do not um, overburden the current structure and seem very appropriate. Secondly, I um, wanted to say that it appears to me that um, this particular application meets all of the eight factors that we uh, need to find in order to allow for such a variance as such a th as this. And the mere fact that your addition is within the setback is um, not dispositive because in this situation you're putting the addition um, in a space that's less non-conforming than the existing house. And if if one were to conclude that you can't put anything in the in the uh, setback requirement area, it would really make your house in a situation where you couldn't modify it. And I don't think that's the intention of the ordinance with regard to grandfathered structures such as this one. And then the, um, the last point I wanted to make was I very much appreciate the fact that you visited with all your neighbors to see their comments or their sort of uh, feelings about the situation. And, uh, took the time to get their signatures, and obviously it resulted in a very much shorter hearing, and I compliment you for taking the time to do that. Thank you very much. No further comments. Any other comments from the board? May I have, let's see here. We'll vote on the elements at this time. Number one, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All those in favor? All in favor, no opposed. Number two, a literal enforcement of the audience would cause a practical difficulty. All those in favor? All in favor, no opposed. Number three, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. All those in favor? All in favor, no opposed. Number four, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All those in favor? All in favor, none opposed. Number five, the practical difficulty is not the result of the action taken, of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All those in favor? All in favor, none opposed. Number six, no feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All those in favor? All in favor, none opposed. And finally, let's see, number seven, the granting of the variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All those in favor? All in favor, no opposed. 
and the property is not located in whole or part within the shoreline areas as described in the ordinance. All those in favor? All in favor, none opposed. May I have a motion, please? I move to grant the, um, the uh, application for variance. State the... Uh, the, um, the application by the uh, applicants, um, James and Elizabeth Samfeld Speck, is it? For variance for the, from the strict application of the ordinance requirement of section 19-6-1 to allow for the construction of the garage at 27 feet, six inches from the front property line. I can make one friendly amendment. Uh, nine, it should be 1963. 1961 is residential aid. 1963. Good point. Thank you. My error. <clears throat> and that address being 325 Mitchell Road. All those in favor of the motion? Who second? Oh, sorry. Who second? Second, please. Pardon me. Who, who, ahead of myself. Who was it? Do I hear a second? Second. We have the motion and we have a second. All those in favor? Again. All in favor, none opposed. Your variance is granted. Thank you. Communications. We received a memorandum from Michael McGovern, town manager, regarding the freedom of access law, the main freedom of access law, uh, recently adopted by the main le legislature, and uh, they adopted and passed the main freedom of access law. This was sent to all zoning board members, as I assume all board members of the town. Uh, that's duly acknowledged and received uh, regarding information access, uh, public meeting proceedings, and so on and so forth. If any, I would assume that this document is posted on the website, and it's certainly available at the town hall if anyone would like to re review that information. The one thing I would note about this uh, freedom of access information, it, it pretty much declares that all our de deliberations are to be in public. And I'm sure we all understood that going into this, but I guess it's worth noting uh, once again because of the <laughs> human nature tendency to want to do otherwise. Thank you. Also, I'd like to welcome back to our recording secretary who had a brief illness and was unable to attend the last meeting but certainly listened to it on tape and transcribed it quite well and from a long distance standpoint any other communications hearing none may i have a motion that the meeting be adjourned second all those in favor all in favor unopposed thank you Thank you.